I got Gucci, I got Pucci, I even got Fiorucci, I got Armani, I got Alfani, I even got Modigliani, I have Dior, and I got so many freaking more. I'm Johnny Loco, and I'm the man with a thousand ties. I come from an area uh, in Brooklyn that was called Bensonhurst. It's still it's still around, but I had an uncle Tom Silvestro that was he came from Italy and uh, he was a really good designer and pattern maker and tailor, but he was making a very good living. And I decided right after high school to get into going to Fashion Institute of Technology. I graduated at FIT in '66, so ties with up and coming and very, very big. I worked for like three mafiosas uh, in, in, in the years uh, designing tuxedos and very high-end uh, menswear. I had a limousine and I was working for a Dominican mafiosa uh, in Corona, Queens. And they would pick me up with a limo. And I went into this thrift shop and I saw this tie. It was very impressive. And I paid 50 cents for it and then I didn't even look in the store what it was but it was a, a, a tie that was eight brush strokes of Picasso and in French on the back, and it said that it was uh, designed by Picasso. In the mid 60s, or the latter 60s, I was paying $100 for a tie. And in those days, you could get two months of rent for $100. My parents were paying like $45 a month. In, in the 60s, ties varied in proportion. I have a tie that I think is almost seven inches wide. It looked like a trip. It looked like Timothy Leary designed it. Oh, uh, yeah, I have a couple of Beatles uh, ties. Uh, that's uh, the Octopus's Garden. If I'm not mistaken, Ringo Starr actually designed that tie. I think ties are very important for everybody, whether it's with clientele, whether it's with women. When they see something different, they uh, you're picking up on the people that you want to uh, socialize with and like communicate with. That's pretty much, in my belief, what a tie can actually do. Somebody told me I look better in cartoon land. <laughs> <laughs> oh, f you.